If uh, uh, Susan, if you can dim the lights, we're gonna watch. It. I hope it. Uh, yes. Um, eventually, Satan came to the party. So, what I'm going to do is show you a quick video on the um, the um, duty free um, uh, zone, and then a quick video. Both of them are just two or three minutes. They're so really not long. Uh, and then I'm going to run through the pres presentation. The important thing um, to maybe latch on to what Ian uh, indicated earlier on, if you look at the spend on Ethiopia by the World Bank, uh, we are going to um, have, and Duncan will lead it, a group visit to um, uh, Ethiopia and Djibouti. And um, so what I want to do with this presentation is to whet your appetite uh, just a bit on the content of Djibouti so that you uh, will consider uh, joining us on that group visit because I think it will be an absolutely worthwhile endeavor. The main thing that drives it is the population of Ethiopia. It's, it's, it's pretty simple. And the fact that um, Djibouti is the main, um, ex they don't have a port of their own and Djibouti is the main uh, uh, port for them. So let me just uh, uh, trust that the technology will... If you're looking for a free trade zone that's superbly positioned for global commerce, then welcome to Djibouti Ports and Free Zones Authority. Sitting at the mouth of the Red Sea, Djibouti has long exploited its commanding location. Approximately 65% of the world's commercial shipping fleet use the country's waters. As a result, Djibouti is a major shipping hub with logistics and ports at the heart of its economy. Djibouti's free trade zone was created with one overriding goal. To bring about a sea change in the way that Africa does business. In an environment that allows trade and commerce to flourish. Our new Djibouti Free Trade Zone sits on a 4,350 hectare site, providing a tax-free location for manufacturing, processing, assembling, distribution and trading that caters for individuals and businesses alike. Djibouti Free Trade Zone's modern facilities are the best in the region. As one of our valued customers, you'll have access to allocated plots of land, a business and industrial park, showrooms, warehouses and offices, wholesale outlets, 24-hour high-level security, e-commerce logistics and customized solutions. The availability of a long-term lease makes the zone ideal if you wish to construct your own facility. This superb business setting provides a one-stop shop for a diverse range of commercial activity, export processing, manufacturing, bonded storage, international logistics and distribution, e-commerce regional distribution, entree port trade, small commodity trading, air sea multimodal transport, multi-country consolidation and fuel oil trading. The zone is duty free and there's zero corporate tax to pay. It permits 100% repatriation of capital and profits with no currency restrictions. And it also allows 100% foreign ownership with no limitations on foreign personnel employment. Additional benefits include preferential access to target markets for manufacturing companies. You will have an easy access to your merchandise and cargo. We offer an easy logistics solution by handling your freight transport on land, ship and air. Our intermodal freight system is sophisticated. It reduces cargo handling, improves security, reduces damage and loss and allows your goods to be transported faster. Internationally, your cargo will travel in our new $4 billion state-of-the-art Djibouti to Addis Ababa train. Alternatively, Air Djibouti will transport your goods at an even faster rate. So, whether you're a large corporation or an individual business owner, Djibouti Free Trade Zone is a single source solution for all your needs. Djibouti's ideal geostrategic location has already helped the country position itself as a transport and shipping hub for its regional neighbours and beyond. With its political stability and strong economic growth, the country is building a reputation as a regional financial centre. Djibouti offers financial services not just to a growing domestic market, 
but also to international shipping operators, neighboring countries, and to 19 member states of Comesa. And that's a marketplace with over 400 million people. Banks and businesses from Europe, Asia, the Middle East, and Africa have been drawn by the country's robust economy. Djibouti has embarked on an ambitious investment program in its infrastructure. And record levels of foreign investment have been pouring into this small country of one million people. The governing body, Djibouti Ports and Free Zone Authority, is investing more than 12 billion US dollars in the country's maritime industry and related mega projects, ship repair and dry docks, the ports of Tujora and Gubay, the Djibouti Multipurpose Port and the Damajog Livestock Port, the LNG Terminal and the Crude Oil Terminal, the Djibouti Free Trade Zone and the Business District the Tajora Mikhaili Railway and the Djibouti Addis Ababa Railway, the Al Haj Ahmed Dini International Airport and the Al Haj Hassan Goule Aptidon International Airport and Cargo Village, Air Djibouti and Djibouti Shipping Company. We're excited by what the future holds. If you are too, then why not get in contact? We can tell you more about how Djibouti Free Trade Zone can benefit your business and help you gain easy access to over 400 million people in the Comessa region. Djibouti Ports and Free Zone Authority, at the heart of trade between Africa and the world. Um, what I'm going to do is they have a, and it's shorter than this one even, so... Uh, there's a nice uh, video about the port facilities as well. So I'm just going to play that for you quickly. So uh, what I'm going to do now is just wrap up the discussion and talk about the very successful day that we had. As Liz mentioned, we were hosted by the Development Bank of Southern Africa, and uh, we were um, quite proud of the fact that we had all our DFIs. So the IDC presented, the DBSI presented, and the ECIC uh, presented. 
we had Black Rhino who's looking at uh, a pipeline and we had Cresco Project Finance who uh, presented in this um, uh, one day seminar and we certainly as Africa House will be looking at having more events like that where we bring together all our DFIs and our private sector companies to look at it. So in terms of um, uh, wrapping up, what I'm going to do is just highlight some of the slides um, uh, in, in the, uh, this presentation. Um, so uh, if you look at the, um, the, the growth rates is um, <coughs> predicted is quite high uh, for the uh, economy. Um, that's a little bit of the history on when the uh, DPFZA was uh, created. And uh, what I would like to, to uh, emphasize here is uh, this is a very nice slide. These guys have really gone to town in terms of giving you benefits um, to operate within uh, the um, free trade zone. Um, what was really interesting is that the Djibouti government, and we'll go through a bit of the details later on, are employing consultants to do feasibility studies for them on all these projects. And they get involved in going out to market to get finance for it. So all these projects that you are seeing, uh, they've convinced me certainly that they are going to be not just a talk shop, but eventually they'll bring these projects to market. And I think that's really an important thing. All of us have seen presentations like this with lots of projects and that sort of thing, but it always seemed to get stuck on a proper bankable feasibility study or something similar. Um, just quickly highlight again, um, the port here, if you, th they would like to see themselves as a competitor to uh, Dubai. They really um, would like to do that because they are um, on the Red Sea Suez Canal, so they have very good access to the European market and it's quicker with Dubai uh, sitting over there in the corner somewhere. And in terms of regional access, uh, I've mentioned Ethiopia, a market of almost 100 million people. If ever South Sudan can stabilize itself, uh, that will give you some major access to uh, South Sudan, who will have massive demands for development. And then obviously um, uh, Khartoum and uh, Sudan itself. Uh, I'm not going to uh, go through this. This is... Uh, an important uh, uh, slide. Um, if you look at where they started in, in 2010, um, regardless of the um, type of um, or import exports, they have really exponentially grew their containers, uh, as was evident from the video that you saw. Non-containerized um, Cargo, also very important growth in that. Um, the interesting thing about uh, this is, which they spoke about a little bit, is uh, the China Silk Road uh, project. They form a, a critical part of it. And by the way, um, for China and Japan, Djibouti is the only place where they have military bases outside of their own countries. Um, which is uh, an indication of the strategic nature of Djibouti, if you look at it uh, from, from that point of view. And then, of course, France, the U.S., uh, a small base by uh, Germany, they all have uh, military bases in Djibouti. So it's, it's a bit of a business for them, it seems. Um, African maritime uh, facades, that's... You know, they, uh, you can see this presentation by the Djiboutis. They go to uh, foreign markets or markets outside of uh, South Africa as well. So they're indicating here yeah, that uh, on this side of the seaboard, you have nine countries and 21 ports. On this side, you have 21 countries and 41 ports. Interesting. And you have 17 landlocked countries. And they clearly want to play a role in helping unlock the landlocked countries. And if you look at their lo location, they can actually
play quite an a important role in that. Uh, all, all these countries don't have the uh, own port facilities. So in the long term, uh, uh, that makes um, a lot of sense, really. Uh, the Comesa market that was mentioned in the, in the video, what I want to do now is just um, quickly run through the amounts of some of these projects, just so that you can stack them up in your head and uh, realize that Duncan will take you to Djibouti if you uh, want to join us and he will uh, expose you to these projects. So there are two things for those of you who sell goods into Africa or potentially into the Ethiopian market, it's important to understand Djibouti. But uh, in my view, just the projects themselves as well that they are planning over time uh, offers uh, an opportunity for our companies. And I see no reason why we cannot uh, compete for uh, some of these. And I'm not going to go to all the details uh, of them. As you can see, this one will be operational next year. Uh, you've seen on the video that the, many of these are uh, under construction. So the, the uh, number of um, projects that they have, obviously uh, things like the business district are uh, long-term uh, investments. Uh, the LNG plants, um, that definitely will not happen soon. My exposure to the oil and gas uh, markets recently uh, suggests that there's uh, an oversupply in the market. It will be a while before that comes uh, 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 into play. But certainly storage facilities uh, supplying it into the regional market, uh, there's the, those projects definitely have some legs. Um, they mentioned that they already have the uh, railway line um, established uh, to um, the capital of um, Ethiopia, whose name for a moment escaped me. Addis Ababa, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> uh, and then we have, there's a summary of all the projects over here. So I just wanted to scan through the, the images. I'm certainly not going to kill you by going through all of these individually. Uh, but these, this, this information is available, and uh, I think what you have to do is to keep an eye open for our marketing material around the Ethiopia and uh, Djibouti visit um, next year. And uh, Liz, the floor is yours. Thank you very much.